Razorback is totally one of the best killer animal horror movies we've seen. Like, a lot of people call it Jaws in the Outback. Yeah, yeah, kind of is that. It kind of is, but it's a bit more deep than that, even. It's way deeper than yeah. Jaws. Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. Today we're going to be talking about 1984's Razorback. But before we get started, what are we drinking? We're drinking a black IPA called the Nostromo's Deadly Secret. Too violent! <laughs> too deadly! Too violent! Too deadly! You have too many of these and your stomach all starts... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I ass? Get this guy some pepto -Bismo. <laughs> Razorback was directed by Russell... Mulcahy. He uh, did Highlander and Highlander 2, the masterpiece. <laughs> Tons of music videos. It's basically, I think, what he's mostly known for. Duran Duran, yeah, yeah. Sting, Paul McCartney, yeah, like everybody. Huge. Razorback stars Gregory Harrison, and he was in uh, a few things, but most notably, Air Bud 2, Golden Receiver. Yeah! It also stars Bill Kerr, and his filmography goes back to 1933. <laughs> this guy's been in a gazillion things. <laughs> Razorback starts off Jake Cullen, and he's holding his grandson, Scotty, and he's putting him to bed. He's, there, there, Scotty, there, there. Puts him to bed, and he starts hearing, like, all this grunting and all these noises outside. So he goes and gets his gun, and he goes to investigate, and something just rushes through the whole house and just destroys it. It's like a freight train that just runs right through. Right through. Jake gets up and starts looking around for his grandson and he, he's gone. And he goes into the outback at night and... Scotty! <laughs> ah! He's all screaming. <laughs> and Jake Cullen is then put on trial. The town figures that it was him who killed and disposed of Scotty, right? And put a hole through his house? <laughs> yeah, like, like a <laughs> fucking freight train? Yeah, like he could do that. That. But there's not enough evidence to convict him, so they let him go. We then get introduced to Carl and Beth, who's husband and wife, and they're living in New York. And we learn that Beth is a reporter, and she mostly does animal welfare stories. Gets a tip in Australia that they're illegally hunting and poaching kangaroos. So she flies down there with her cameraman, yeah. <laughs> and they're all setting up outside of a pub. Of course, you hear everybody's all rowdy inside and drinking and playing darts and yeah. shit. Well, they go into the pub packed, and it's like <laughs> yeah. the kind of place you would want to drink at. <laughs> and they're like, uh, uh, anyone want to talk to us about hunting kangaroo? And just yeah, everybody looks. It's silent. Yeah, because like, they all they do They all it. do it, yeah. <laughs> There's one place in particular that's guilty of this, or of animal cruelty, and that's Pet Pack Cannery. Beth ends up uh, running into Jay Cullen, who pulls up. I don't hunt kangaroo. I hunt razorback. Something about blasting the shit out of a razorback that brightens up my whole day. Beth ends up making her way to this Pet Pack Cannery, and she does a little bit of investigating some camera work. And we also kind of get introduced to the Baker brothers. They kind of get pissed off and they sort of break her camera a little bit. What do you want? What are you looking at? They get in their vehicle and actually chase her down the road. And they start terrorizing her and trying to run her off the road. And they actually do get her off. And they end up pulling her out and they attempt to rape her. Slimy. You're disgusting. And, uh, yeah. I yeah. want some loving. Yeah. <laughs> They got the spotlights on her and everything. They, 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 they used to hunt kangaroos, you know? <laughs> Yeah. They start hearing things in the background, all these weird noises. Get a sense that it's that Razorback that's sort of watching over all of this. And it scares the shit out of them enough that they actually just abandon the whole thing and leave Beth there. Beth gets into her car. Boom, the door gets ripped off. And it's the Razorback that forces his way in and starts to maul and stab Beth with his tusks and starts like, he lifts her up into the car and yeah. starts flailing yeah, her it's around. Crazy. And fucking just destroys her. Jake Cullen is actually the person who finds this abandoned, destroyed vehicle with nobody there. She's gone missing. 
but he does find part of the Baker brothers' truck that he recognizes. Yeah. He goes to confront them, and they basically tell him to fuck off. Yeah. You, know, you got no proof that we, we were ever there. So now, because Beth has gone missing, Carl Winters flies in from the States into Australia to find out what's happened to her. No one really knows. Mm -hmm. All they really have is this footage that the cameraman took of her interview with Jake. Yeah. That's all that's left. So he lands in Australia and goes to talk to Jake Cullen. Tells him that, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what happened to your wife. All I know is there's a Razorback out there. You should probably talk to the Baker brothers. <laughs> Morons. Yeah. Because <laughs> he figures they had something to do with it, right? So he goes to that pet pack cannery and kind of poses as like just a tourist who kind of wants to hang out I guess. Yeah, and he's like, you help them do their job? Yeah, so he starts talking to this Baker Brothers and suddenly he's like wiping down the machines at this factory and, and like... shoveling all this slop and yeah. shit. And he says he wants to go hunting with them. He's from Canada. He's like, oh, so I'm a Canadian. Ah, Canadians are Americans, aren't they? <laughs> uh, well, not quite. Not quite. <laughs> And he starts hanging out with them in this kind of underground cave and everything. Yeah, where they live. Yeah, like <laughs> this weird cave. <laughs> that night they take Carl kangaroo hunting. They drive out in the outback and it's yeah, dark and there's... Spotlights. You got the spotlight out and there's all these dead trees. They find this kangaroo and they shoot it and it's not dead from the first shot, right? And Carl's kind of like mortified from this. He starts throwing up on that Baker guy's head. <laughs> Come on. Yup, chucking from a dead kangaroo. <laughs> so the Baker brothers tell Carl, well, you know, you skin this kangaroo and we'll be back in six hours. <laughs> yeah. And they just leave. They leave him in the outback at night and he starts freezing. And he's all sleeping next to the kangaroo. To try to stay warm. So he starts walking at nighttime after he's tried to sleep next to this kangaroo. <laughs> and he comes across this big windmill thing and climbs up it and falls asleep. He's like, straps himself yeah. in so he doesn't <laughs> fall off. And he's got them all dangling there. Yeah. Wakes up in the morning, bright sun, and... <laughs> there's all these boars and shit like headbutting this thing trying to get him down, right? And it falls over into this like disgusting looking cesspool yeah. with all these fucking rotting corpses. All these and dead shit. boar and shit and climbs out and goes across the desert and it's hot and he starts hallucinating. He sees that weird skeleton of that forest and it's coming to life yeah, and everything. Yeah. And like, Jesus, <laughs> making all these weird sounds and he eventually finds civilization again. He stumbles upon this woman who's bathing outside naked. Uh huh, yeah. Nice. He scares her, <laughs> then she turns around, scares him, and he faints. <laughs> <laughs> so we find out this is actually Sarah Cameron, and she's friends with Jay Cullen, and she's like doing all this research on the boars. Why have the boars gone crazy and start eating each other and yeah. eating everything. There's like this crazy epidemic with the boars. So they explain all this to Carl, that Jake is hunting this Razorback and possibly this Razorback is what ate his wife. Jake goes out with this gun with a special tracker on it and, and actually sees the Razorback finally shoots it with this tracker so they can track it with the computer. <laughs> it's all ancient technology now. <laughs> well, Jake is waiting for this Razorback. He's kind of staking it out, right? And it's nighttime. He's sitting there and who shows up? The Baker brothers. And oh. they know that Jake knows that they had something to do with Beth's disappearance, right? So they attack him and they beat the shit out of him and they break his legs Yeah. and leave him in the outback basically to get eaten by this boar and he wakes up and it's like sun's beating down on him he's like, yeah. his legs are all broken <laughs> yeah. you really feel bad for oh, him yeah no it's like... quite the tragic story yeah so then he crawls to this shed then he starts being attacked by the razorback and there's nothing to protect him except this shitty flimsy shed yeah. right <laughs> and that's where we're gonna end the plot so if you want to see if and how Jake gets out of this situation, and how Carl handles the Baker brothers and the Razorback, well, keep watching Razorback. <laughs>
So one of the hallmarks of this movie is the look and how stylistic this movie is. It is incredible. It's the first thing that you have to talk about because it's just so breathtaking. Yeah. It is. Like, it's visually a breathtaking movie. Yeah. You have lots of panoramic shots of, like, the Australian outback. You've got these vivid, striking colors, too. Yeah. Between, like, the horizon, these blues with this orangey, like, yeah. pink colors. That's the natural outback, so it's probably easy to shoot. You don't need to do much to get a good shot because it looks beautiful anyways. Yeah. But then those nighttime shots where you can tell they put a lot of fucking effort into the way those nighttime shots look with the crazy lighting. It's just so stylistic. It's it's actually haunting looking. Yeah. It's it, a weird movie because it says haunting looking as it is beautiful. It must have taken them forever to do the set the lighting shots yeah. up. Like even that shot when they're driving in that forest and you see the spotlight, how you it's just like a pinpoint of light. Yeah. And you see it kind of swaying back and forth and it's incredible. Cinematography is like Top notch, better than top notch. Yeah. It's actually one of the best looking movies I've ever seen in my life. It probably sets the bar to the height. Yeah. You know, like there's not many that can beat this. The cinematographer was Dean Semler and he did Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, which shows in this movie. It looks very similar. Damn near the same. And even the uh, the vehicles that are driven in this movie feel like they're from Mad Max. Yeah, very Mad Max feel to this and he also did Thunderdome as well yeah and he did a lot of other big blockbuster movies so this cinematographer it's he's definitely one of the best yeah yeah and uh yeah and he does a good job of making this world look post-apocalyptic even though it's not it's not yeah he makes the world look post-apocalyptic and ancient at the same time mm -hmm. which is very neat <laughs> yeah it's a very neat movie the vibe is just Mwah. Yeah. You know, chef's kiss there. Yeah. And the settings have a lot to do with that. Like, the settings in this movie are fantastic. Like we mentioned, the Outback is a fantastic setting because it's beautiful, but it's also super dangerous. Yeah. You can either freeze to death at night or die from heat exhaustion in the daytime. Mm -hmm. Plus, you got wild animals out there, the boars, the razorbacks, and these crazy fucking Australian hillbillies like the Baker Brothers that are out there to do you harm so it's like super dangerous yeah, yeah but beautiful that's a hallmark of this movie too is the dynamic between damn near everything yeah it's like even even though something seems peaceful and serene in this movie there's either the baker brothers that are out there or the razorback that's yeah. out there or so just the elements just the sun yeah yeah <laughs> and it's you know something is out there to kill you then you have the settings that are like not the nature settings you have like the pub you yeah know, that that staple <laughs> australian pub there's all everyone sweating yeah and drinking it looks like very warm beer uh, you know? it still looks kind of good though yeah, it looks oh it looks great <laughs> and then you got like the factory canning factory is a great setting yeah with all those kangaroo carcasses yeah. hanging and, and again the way it's lit it's mm -hmm. fantastic and then there's that weird cave yeah that the baker brothers live in like that's a <laughs> Why they live there, I don't know, but it's an awesome setting, you know, it looks it looks fantastic. Everyone does a great job of playing their characters, yeah. like we've already mentioned, the Baker Brothers, well, they kind of stand out like big time in mm -hmm. this. They are like so strong because they're so over the top. Right. They're like, you're typical, <laughs> they're, all, they're all driving that fucking beat up truck. <laughs> yeah. And they're all driving the shit out of it, like going off all these ramps and everything. <laughs> Never forget those guys after watching this movie. Jake Cullen, another great character, the old grizzled beat up man who's got a vendetta. He's yeah. like, you know. He's out to hunt the Razorback. He's, he's the Captain Ahab, you know, yeah, to, yeah. to the Ra Razorback's Moby Dick. The Loomis. Yeah, the Loomis to Michael the Myers. Myers. <laughs> yeah. Too violent, too deadly. And then you got like Carl Winters is another good character too, because he he just seems like an unassuming guy. Like when you first meet him, he's like wearing a suit and tie and like trying to cook dinner yeah. horribly. Yeah, he's a city boy. A city right? boy, right? And then he's got to go down the outback and, like, fight these fucking Baker brothers and a Razorback. And, like, got to do it. He's yeah. got no other choice. It's it's do or die, right? Yeah. You know, and he... 
That 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 character arc is great too. It's structured perfectly. Oh. Right from the opening scene where that Razorback tears through his fucking house and steals his kid, like couldn't open the movie in a better way. <laughs> no, no. And then it kind of <laughs> calms down a bit, and then you get uh, the death of Beth too yeah. in the car, right? So that whole scene is tense. And it's really, really cool and stylistic with the way she dies. And it's exciting, too, at the same time. And then it calms down again. Then you get more action later, right? Yeah. And it just keeps going. And the swerves, like, because you don't expect Beth to die. No. You, you think she's the main character, you know? The, the American city girl is going like, to survive the Razorback. But no, she dies 20 minutes in. Yeah. And then her husband comes in. Oh, he's the hero now. And they swerve you, and that's another great way this movie does it with the pacing, where it's like, well, now I, I, I thought I knew what was going to happen. Yeah. Now I don't. Now I don't. Now, yeah. And then you're always wondering what you're in for, right? Yeah. It kind of throws you off. Very focused. This movie is very, like, they know exactly what they're out to do. Yeah, and, and how to do it. And Yeah, and they, they achieve it. The tension in this movie is fantastic, and it comes from two things, really comes from the, the Razorback mm. and the Baker Brothers, too, because, like, when the Baker Brothers start trying to rape Beth, like, that's a tense scene. And then they leave, and then the Razorback comes, like, holy shit, now that's tense. Yeah. And then when Carl starts hanging out with the Baker Brothers, all that is super tense, too, because you don't know if they know mm -hmm. that he's on to them. But as the viewer, you know that... Carl knows. Yeah, he yeah. knows that they have something to do with it. So yeah. you're always kind of wondering, well, when they turn their backs, is he going to hit him in the head yeah. or is he going to do something? Or the opposite. Are they going to do something to him? Yeah. Like, it's all very tense, you know? The whole movie is fucking tense. <laughs> the sound design in this movie is fantastic, too. Like, not only the sound design, but the score. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the sound design first. Like, the sounds that the board that the Razorback make are just horrific. Yeah. It's almost like reminds me a little bit of the thing. Yeah. Like when he's screaming, it sounds like human screams. Yeah. And it doesn't sound like an animal that you've ever heard. No. It sounds like this demon or something because they're making it like this, you know, almost a demonic thing. Right. They're trying to detach it from reality. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's great. And like all these other weird sounds too, like just when Carl's like in the desert. There's all these weird, yeah, weird yeah, screams yeah. and like oh. the music is all weird and <laughs> screechy yeah. and shit and like you're sort of unsettled. Yeah, and then the actual score, the movie score, which is mostly a synthesizer electronic score, fantastic. And the music is done by Iva Davis, who is the lead singer and founder of famous Australian pop group Ice House. Mm. Quite sure you see an Ice House video playing on the TV. Oh, yeah. At their apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yuck. Yeah. <laughs> and the Razorback himself, the look and design of it are amazing. Just catch quick glimpses and you never see the full Razorback too, right? Yeah. And they keep him in the shadows and he could pop out of anywhere, yeah. right? Out of the darkness. Stealthy. Even though He's this huge. fucking thing is huge. It's yeah. enormous. Because it's so quick, right? Mm -hmm. Less is more in this. Mm -hmm. Like, you never see the thing from, you know, tail to snout. You, yeah. You never okay. see it. It's always just big close-ups of its face. Yeah. The big fucking tusks. And that's all you really need. They built uh, a couple of big animatronic boars for specific reasons, like one specifically for ramming <laughs> and one yeah. for close-ups and stuff like that. The fact you don't see the whole thing really helps the movie, because I'm sure that if you did, it might look maybe a little tacky yeah. or not so real, but they knew, you know? They yeah. knew, let's not show this whole thing. Exactly, that's all you need, yeah. just glimpses. They set up a lot of lore around this Razorback too because yeah. he's kind of a one-off. Like there's not, it's yeah. not like there's tons of these enormous yeah. Razorbacks floating around there. Weird mutation or yeah, something. Yeah, there's just one and like this guy has to hunt it. It adds to that weird mystique about the Australian Outback yeah. too where it's like, is it this mythical kind of land where these monsters exist yeah. too? You know, yeah. it's kind of neat. Sarah mentions when she's doing her research on all the animals is that 
they're stressed. Eating each other. And... Yeah, and they're not acting quite right. Yeah. And I got the sense that this movie has a bit of a message in it, too. Oh, I think it does, that, totally. Yeah. yeah, and that, you know, humans are fucking up the natural environment of things, yeah, right? Yeah, the ecosystem, yeah. Yeah, and so the animals aren't quite right. And maybe this is where, like, out of all of that, you're getting a thing like the Razorback yeah. that's sort of out for revenge on the humans who's fucking everything up, yeah, basically. Yeah. Obviously, there's commentary in here about, like, of course, kangaroo poaching, all that stuff. There is a bit of humor in this movie, too, which works great. <laughs> and it's peppered in just where it needs to be, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like when he throws up on that guy's head. Yeah. It's the little quick, funny part. And then when that guy is like that, that bum's all yeah. <laughs> drinking beer, watching TV. <laughs> yeah, he's all laughing at that show. And then uh, I guess he accidentally traps a razor back in this like <laughs> trap he has outside. That's like kind of like tied to the porch or whatever. Yeah. And the razor bag takes off and rips the whole wall off <laughs> as the guy's watching TV. And drags it for like miles. <laughs> And then he's not laughing after, <laughs> yeah. But we are. <laughs> yeah. And the last thing we have to mention about this movie is the last thing that happens in the movie, and that is the showdown between Carl and the Razorback in the plant. Yeah. Which is a great place to put it. It's like, it takes place in the plant where all this animal cruelty happens, where they've got all these kangaroos and things that they're turning into pet food. Yeah. <laughs> And that's where the Razorback is trying to kill Carl, you know? Mm -hmm. The commentary, again, on that is great. But the way that it all goes down is fantastic. Yeah. It's great. Like, again, a great setting. The tension is fantastic. It reminded me a lot of The Terminator. That's right, yeah. The showdown in the factory, Yeah, right? yeah. even the music. Razorback is totally one of the best killer animal horror movies we've seen. Like, a lot of people call it Jaws in the Outback. Yeah, it yeah, kind of is that. It kind of is, but it's a bit more deep than that, even. It's way deeper than yeah. Jaws. I'd say it's just as good as Jaws, if not oh. even better. Just for the cinematography. Yeah, this is a million <laughs> times better than Jaws. Yeah. Jaws can fuck right off compared yeah. to this. Jaws meets the Terminator in the Outback almost, you <laughs> <Yeah>. know? <laughs> it's got all those elements in it, you know? And it, it does it all really good. Yeah, yeah. And it also, <laughs> I was thinking too, it would make for a great NES game. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when they put the tracker on the yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> and then like... At the end, you're, you're like the little Carl on all these conveyor belts, and there's all these like cans of food getting thrown at you. You gotta jump <laughs> yeah. over them, and the the ending boss is the, the boar. Yeah, the yeah. That. You gotta you gotta jump and hit him, you know, yeah. and back away. And if you want a fantastic killer animal horror movie, look no further. This is the one for you. Yeah. You have to watch Razorback. Yeah, it sets the bar so high. There are not many that can beat this movie. And not just for the animal side of it, just the movie itself. Yeah. You yeah. Know? The look, the acting, the cinematography, the tension, the pacing, everything. It's all fantastic. Yeah. And until next time, keep drinking.